out this juice is a little bit bigger. But, you know, still the spine, I can feel the spine is processes, so it's probably not going to be an issue. But the idea is, is that we're looking for an ideal angle. Okay. And our ideal angle is actually dictated to us off of the spinous process. If you take a look at the spinous process, it's shaped like a triangle, right? So if we're looking at our spinous process and it's shaped like a triangle, we want our, our needle entry to go and be parallel to the triangle. Okay? And we're entering in parallel to that triangle, trying to keep our needle tip as close to the midline as possible. Okay, so when this thing enters in like that, it's going to want to be pretty darn good. That's a good angle. Now, can you save that image to the other screen? Absolutely. Thank you. Now, take a picture again. That's a bad angle. Okay. And picture. Why is that a bad angle? Well, what's going to end up happening is, is that as soon as we enter in to that girl space, the lead's going to go off towards the gutter. It's going to fall off of there towards the opposite gutter. And that's a bad angle. Now, in the same kind of manner, picture, this is a bad angle also. Is that even though we enter in, it's a lot more likely to go off of there towards the left side of the gutter than what we want. And in comparison over there to the right side of the picture. So what are we going to tell people to want to do initially at least? Picture? Good. What I tell people to want to do is once they go and actually get their angle, if you're just starting out, one of the easiest things to do is to actually go and make that line on the skin that actually follows your ideal angle. Just to go and kind of show you where your where your angle actually is and how you should be approaching it to start off with. Then what you can do is you can go along your line and actually take a picture. You go about one and a half to two pebbles below on your line. And you can go and actually enter in at that level. And that's it. You know what I mean? You already have like your perfect entry. So now watch what I'm gonna do. Remember what I told you? I don't want to go and kind of push and retract forward. I want to make sure that I'm kind of popping through the skin. And once I pop through the skin, then I'll start to go and follow through. Picture? Picture? Okay. Now the other thing is this, and this is just this person is a lot bigger than this, so I need to kind of raise my angle a little bit. Picture. The other thing about this about this particular um, about this particular thing is is that I never start to go and use my loss of resistance until I reach the edge of the actual lamina. The fact that it is is that if you're above lamina, then you can't do that. It's not possible. So I wait until I'm actually at the edge of lamina. Picture. Until I'm at the edge of lamina before I start using loss of resistance. You know, look, let me, let me tell you something. Let, let me tell you something. It's, the, the idea is this, is that you don't want to go and try to feel the lamina if you can avoid it. If you kind of touch it, okay, it's not a problem, but patients find this very painful. I do these in my office. I do these with absolutely no sedation whatsoever. None, zero, nothing. I use local anesthetic, and I use, um, I use before I put in this, I put in a spinal needle, a three and a half inch spinal needle, and localize the lamina. But the only time patients really start to go through the collar is if I touch the lamina. Just goes to show you how painful the actual lamina is, you know? So, here we go. Here's the actual. Uh, I use loss of resistance to saline and air. What ends up happening as a result of that is that not only do you get a tactile feel, but you also going to get a, a visual confirmation of that. So here we go, watch this. Pressure, 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 and you guys see that? You guys could actually see the saline going down over there too. So we're in space. We're in the actual epidural space now. Um, yeah, picture. Now, the other thing that I do, and this is very subtle kind of kind of motion also, is depending on where my tip is with respect to the midline, I actually adjust the bevel of my needle to accommodate for it. So if you'll, if you'll notice over here, I just slightly passed over the midline. So what I'm going to do is I pass it over to the right, so I'm going to adjust my bevel to the left to go ahead and actually, when my, when my lead comes through, it'll stay towards that left side. Okay? Now this is actually a very important